Uh, thanks for coming. We're super excited to have that Docker internal summit. We talked about a lot of stuff in the past two days. Uh, and here it's where the community gathers and uh, uh, we go to the next step of the container ecosystem. Uh, so today is the Docker uh, internal summit, uh, but it's also the Container summit, uh, the Container D summit, uh, and, and that part is in collaboration with the CNCF. Uh, so as you uh, as you may have heard, uh, Docker is a platform made of lots of components. Uh, we talked about them in the past few days. So at the bottom you have InfraKit, which manages infrastructure, Linux Kit, uh, your toolkit to build uh, Linux distributions. Container D, the core container uh, uh, runtime. Uh, and then on top of that, we have SwarmKit for orchestration and a bunch of application services. Uh, as, uh, as Docker grew in the past few years, uh, we extracted lots of different components. So let's talk about maybe uh, uh, a few of them um, that we open source recently. Uh, the, the most um, most recent one, uh, actually, that was in March uh, at um, um, at the at the KubeCon and Cloud Native conference. Uh, so we donated uh, Container D to the CNCF, and um, so Container D is a core container runtime. It's uh, the component that allows you to uh, to do container execution as well as uh, uh, image distribution and uh, local uh, network interface management. Uh, so it, it's built by Docker, but with input from the, the five largest cloud providers. And so it's the, the piece in there in the stack that really runs containers. And the role in the ecosystem of Container D is to, uh, to be able to have, uh, on top of your hardware, you have one uh, thin layer of standards. Uh, so these are made in the, in the OCI project, uh, the Open Container Initiative. So there are two standards for runtime and uh, image. And then on top of that, you have Container D that implements that. And then the whole industry can, uh, can build uh, higher level systems on top of that. Uh, so uh, at Docker, we're using SwarmKit for orchestration and we bundle all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, but for example, Amazon ECS could use Containerd in there. Arun, that's your weekend project number three. Uh, once you get your hands on Mobi, uh, Microsoft ECS could use that, uh, and Kubernetes, uh, more importantly, uh, which which has this new CRI interface, the Container Runtime interface, that's implemented in terms of Docker today, and that can be implemented in terms of Containerd today, uh, tomorrow. Uh, and I think there's already a PR in there uh, for that. Uh, so why, why did you choose uh, CNCF for Containerd? Uh, first, uh, Containerd was very aligned with the goals of the Cloud Native Foundation. So it's uh, the, the, when you're reading the charter of the CNCF, it's a container package, dynamically managed, and microservices oriented. So Containerd was really a good fit for these goals. Uh, and, and the role of Containerd is to be a great container runtime for cloud native systems in general. So, and, and the second aspect is that it was super aligned uh, with, the goal, uh, with uh, some of the projects in CNCF. So Containerd uses gRPC, which is another CNCF project, and ex exposes metric in the Prometheus format. Uh, and the last thing is that uh, there will be some integration with uh, Kubernetes, uh, which is another uh, CNCF component. So the container movements needs, uh, uh, so, the, so that's container D. Now the most recent one that we open sourced, uh, that's uh, what Solomon open sourced on stage uh, Tuesday, which is Linux kit. Uh, so that's a kit to build uh, custom Linux components uh, that are part of your wider uh, um, uh, container system. And so we're doing that in partnership Again, with the Linux Foundation, it's called Linux Kit, uh, and, uh, and then uh, with uh, lots of other companies like IBM, Microsoft, ARM, HP, and Intel. And you saw the demo of Microsoft showing using Linux Kit to bring Linux containers to Windows the other day. Uh, the last thing, our open source production model, I really love these drawings from Laurel with the little mice. Uh, evolve uh, from a, a single monolithic open source code base to collaborating on components. Uh, and uh, it showed its limits when we started to do all the additions uh, by bringing Docker beyond Linux. 
Uh, and uh, what, we, uh, what we found was a very good area of collaboration between the different teams at Docker building these editions, this notion of an assembly. Uh, that's an area where we assemble common components and all the editions can reuse that. And so we built some tooling and a framework around that uh, that's called Mobi. Uh, and we think that, and, and uh, Solomon open source Mobi the other day, and uh, we think that Mobi can help the ecosystem go to the next level of growth uh, to build uh, container systems. And so that's the Mobi project, it's the most important open source project that Docker has created since the original one. Uh, and so today we're going to talk about that a lot. Uh, it has a library of uh, 80 components, you can pa package your own components, you bring them as containers. Uh, it has some reference assemblies, you can find them. I, I think Rolf published the examples that Solomon showed on stage. Uh, he published them yesterday night, and I, I, I tweeted about that yesterday night. Uh, and you can create your own assemblies or create new ones, and I, I expect there will be a lot of that going on today. Uh, so it, it has lots of contributors because the Docker code base moved there, uh, and you can do a special as, a specialized assembly development there. It's a community-run project. Uh, we'll have an open governance uh, inspired by the Fedora project, and you don't need to donate your code to that project. It works really well with uh, foundations and, uh, and other organizations like Apache Projects or the CNCF. Uh, so, so it's been a very positive uh, thing so far. Is it all about singing Kumbaya? We're, we're actually here uh, to build and fix stuff. So Solomon talked about the development improvement process at Docker. People complain about details. We just fix the details and we repeat forever. Uh, and what does it mean for apps? Um, so we sent, we sent out a survey that you can found, find there uh, where there was only one question, the top three things you would change or add for apps. Uh, and this survey was sent to all of you, so if you haven't filled it, uh, please, uh, uh, please fill it uh, in the next few days. Uh, and basically the top three, uh, the top three uh, items there were uh, CLI simplification, backwards compatibility, and storage uh, volume and distributed system. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about here is uh, one of the projects that's called Infinite. Uh, they are, they're working on the storage part, so if you're interested in that aspect, because it seems to be an area that many people are, uh, they'll be here at one of the tables. So let's talk about the agenda. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I, at 9.15, I'll, I'll stop bothering you. And then uh, um, Justin and the team are going to talk about the Mobi project and going more into the details about how it works. Uh, then Michael Crosby and the, and, and the ContainerD team are going to uh, do a progress report on, on when contain, where ContainerD is today. Then we'll take a quick break. Uh, then we'll have a Q&A with Solomon. I'm sure many of you have uh, questions and he has tons of answers. And, um, and then uh, we'll do a short update on uh, many of the components that we open sourced uh, in the past few months. So SwarmKit, InfraKit, Notary, Infinite, and Unikernel. Then we'll do lunch. And after that, in the afternoon, we have, uh, we'll have two sections of uh, internal tracks where we'll just split into different tables. The different teams are going to uh, uh, sit at the different tables, so based on your interest, you just go to the table where there's one team uh, for the topic that you're interested in. Uh, and then we'll have happy hour uh, at five. So that's it, let's take the containers mainstream and now uh, let's uh, talk about uh, Mobi. All right, thanks. You want to, yeah, Justin? I apologize. I, I apologize in advance if I if I'm a little slow today. So, are you gonna talk and then we'll answer questions together? Does that sound good? Um, the plan? What is we can plan? we can we we can we can plan how we work like really. Okay. I mean, I was um, I was going to do a little intro to. Maybe from my point of view, perfect. And then yeah, let's talk about Linux Kit a bit, but we can. But then maybe you want to talk about. Maybe I should talk a bit about maybe. Then you should follow on from there. Sure. And then we should. Yeah, I'll, I'll. Just as a little context, yesterday, well, over the day before that, we introduced two new projects. We introduced a lot of changes that we're really excited about, 
in the back end, there were a lot of conversations with a lot of people about it. Um, and so there was a lot of, a lot of um, interest, I think, in using it and understanding better uh, where it's going. And in parallel, we're dealing with some confusion from the active Docker repo contributors, wondering why their repo moved. And I think we emphasized mostly communication in person with the people at DockerCon and communication with the maintainers. But um, I think casual observers of the GitHub repo are, have a lot of question marks above their heads right now. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing that the conversations here will be a mix of both, both talking about the exciting new things we can do and all the positive stuff, and also addressing the technicalities of the, the change and um, how to make it nice and smooth and maybe addressing confusion along the way. So uh, I'm just expecting questions about both, but if you feel like there's two tracks here, there definitely, there definitely is two tracks. Moby is right now two things, and hopefully soon it'll be only one thing. So hopefully I didn't confuse everyone even more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for, thanks for coming, and I'll let Justin talk. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, when I started working at Docker a few years back, um, the, the, the really big criticism that there was, and it was a, a very valid criticism, I think, was that Docker was one great big monolithic daemon all running as root, and really that was a kind of terrible thing, and indeed it was a terrible thing from the security point of view, from the maintainability point of view. Um, and, um, you know, it was a completely fair criticism. Um, you know, I, w I was a Unix programmer. I think we were, back then we were all Unix programmers. It was long before when the idea of running containers on Windows was a, th was a thing. Um, and, you know, it, Docker was not a set of a Unix-like tool, a set of tools. It wasn't a set of communicating processes. It was just one big thing, one big daemon running as root. Um, no privilege separation, nothing. Um, and you know, we were building a, um, an ecosystem around microservices and, um, and um, making services smaller and, and more, um, talking about security and so on, and yet we weren't really doing that with our, with our own product. It was this big kind of inconsistency. Um, so you know, let's build micro, let's build really small, secure microservices using a great big monolith. It kind of was, it was kind of weird, and the, the criticisms were perfectly valid. So, so we started on that journey. Um, you know, I think you know, Runcy was the first thing. It was um, it was split out, partly for standardization reasons, but partly also for componentization reasons, um, and and the the. The one reason really drove the other, but it you know it's like let's 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 start by doing that, um, and then um, container D followed. Container D wasn't was was just really um, I think you know it was just a, a feeling that once we had Run C and we wanted to incorporate it in Docker, let's not just incorporate it via this monolith. Let's split this out. So Michael basically just decided to make it one day without telling anyone, I think. Um, as far as I know. Uh, um, and so we, we incorporated Container D um, much, much sooner than, in, 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 than anyone expected, I think. Um, and so, so we kind of finally had a, a little bit less monolith, a little bit of stuff moved, moved into one place. And, um, which was great, and it was you know, and um, Container D then, of course, was this year, uh, well, at the end, really at the end of last year, was was relaunched with a with a bigger with a bigger purpose and a bigger um, as a bigger project, and as a component um, that other people can use in other projects, which is really the definition of a of a successful component is something that is not just a, a chunk of a chunk of our of Docker cut out and moved into a separate thing, but a real comp infrastructural component that people can use. They can build, you know, we'll, we're working on building it into Kubernetes, we're building it on, into 
many other container platforms as a, as a core component. And the amount of interest we've seen in um, ContainerD has shown what, what a successful component story really looks like. And that's been incredibly encouraging in the, the, um, the, over the last few months from the, from the launch in, um, in December to the um, summit we had a, few, a couple of months ago, the, um, the CNCF launch in Berlin a month ago, and the interest we're seeing today and, um, at DockerCon. And it's, it really, it's really shown us that components are incredibly important. Um, so, um, we've all, I mean, we, over the years, as, as Patrick mentioned, we've spun out a lot of other components as well. Um, the, the kits, um, the various parts of the stack, InfraKit, uh, HyperKit, uh, VPN kit, um, and Linux kits most recently. Um, so, and these components have kind of had a, ha, starting to have a, a good life of their own. We've, I've been talking to loads of people about InfraKit um, over the last few days and the, work, the, the great work they're doing leveraging InfraKit for their use cases, and that's really encouraging. Um, the Linux Kit launch, the whole aim of launching it out was to build a community around it that is not as only a Docker component, and we, um, it was really cool having people working on um, on, on Kubernetes support and um, the work that we've did with us that we've kind of sat down and planned after, after during KubeCon um, to get Kubernetes running. Um, because again, for components to be successful, they have to be successful um, out in other platforms, in other container platforms, in the broader container ecosystem. Um, and that's the, that's the that's the ecosystem that you know docker is very much part of this broader ecosystem as solomon said in his keynote that the scope of containers is growing everyone is using containers now a few years ago containers were still a really niche area but now absolutely everyone you talk to is using them for everything from I, uh, you know from iot to mainframes as people were demoing earlier at DockerCon. Um, there's there's nothing there's nothing that's not using containers there's all the developers want to use containers. Um, it was, you know, um, good fun, you know, doing Linux Kit because Linux Kit was bringing containers down at the bottom of the stack, um, and then there's loads of use cases there. And the um, the components we have, like ContainerD, are, which we use in Linux Kit, are great for that type of use case as well, because ContainerD is nice and lightweight and easy easy to embed in other applications, as it, as it, as indeed was the point of of it. Um, um, it was it was great talking to to Ranchi yesterday about um, about the journey from them embedding how they embedded Docker into Rancher OS back years ago and um, um, and they're kind of trying trying to use Docker as a component for doing that and the difficulties that they run into and the fact that con we all know that ContainerD is a much better fit for that kind of thing and that's that's what components you know should be for being able to be reused in other ways. But we've also I think you know so we've had some of these successes, but we've also had a had a bunch of components of the Docker platform that are as components are kind of failures, I'd, I'd say. As um, pieces of the Docker platform, they're kind of useful, but um, we haven't really gone the full extent and turned them into the components the way they should be. I think um, probably the best example of that is SwarmKit, which uh, is a kit and was designed as a kit, and um, people like Steve spent a lot of time making it a standalone kit, but it's still got Entangled into the um, Docker platform in many ways, in terms of interfaces and in terms of um, how it's integrated, and you, you, it's not been adopted by any other project to use for other purposes, which means it's not really a successful component. Um, so we need to fix that. Um, we need to make these components actually usable as components properly. Um, 
And that's, that's the kind of forcing factor of the, of the maybe project that, we, that we've basically said, we're going to force ourselves to do that work that we kind of half did before and make everything into real standalone components. Um, and so we're going to take them all and we're, get, we're going to make Docker, the product, a, um, an assembly of standalone components. You can take all these components, you can build them. We will build the Docker platform like that from them in the open as an open source project from open components that are uh, um, either our, you know, our components or their components that belong to the CNCF or the OCI. Um, we will, uh, but we will make all these components successful standalone products, projects, themse projects themselves. So they can be components like Infricate that you can use to do um, run stuff on bare metal as we've been talking about earlier today or in Linux Kit you can use as a component to build um, all sorts of exciting um, applications and experiment with new um, security um, things and so on that we've been um, talking about. We'll talk about it much more later. And um, But we kind of had to force this change on ourselves because we've, we've had this platform and these components for a while and it's not really been, um, uh, we haven't been doing it, we haven't been forcing ourselves to actually do the componentization. We've just been kind of, uh, saying we will do it one day. And, and so the, the, this launch of the Moby project at DockerCon this year has really been that thing to f absolutely force us to do, to make these changes and um, really to kind of, um, you know, sometime, sometimes you just can't say, oh yeah, we'll do that later. Com yeah, components are good, but we haven't done it. Everything is still running as roots. You know, we, we still, know that these problems have to be fixed. We need to do the privilege separation. Com the components of Docker need to be running, you know, some of them <laughs> unprivileged, some of them privileged, some of them with limited privileges. There's a load of work in Container D, which is like where those things are really um, clearly demarked in a way that they weren't with Docker. You know, there's um, the way the design of the um, how mounts work, where you get past a list of mounts rather than the component doing the mounting for you, so you can the process that gives you the list of mounts doesn't have to be able to do mounts. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's loads of thinking around that design, but we're still running all the, all the parts um, as, as root, which we don't, really, we don't want to do. We really want to split this stuff out, run a bunch of containers that makes up the Docker system. And then we want you to be able to build other projects on top of the same tooling. Isn't, there's a, huge diversity of use cases for containers. As I said, everyone's running containers for everything. The way you want to build the system for IoT, for example, could be very, very different if you're running on a tiny little embedded device that's running one specific application is very different from if you're running a huge cluster um, of you know, big machines with GPUs. You know, it's, it's, a very, it's a very different environment. And um, we need to basically, um, you know, change, change the way we um, construct a, the whole toolkit in order to make it into a toolkit and not just a, a big monolithic thing. Um, so, the, so basically by, by doing this big move, this big jump, and by saying, yes, this is, this is Moby now, it's not Docker, we take a, we, Docker, Docker is still Docker for the users. We're still, obviously, the Docker is still the, the product that everyone is going to and using and loves, and that's great. But the way we build it, the way we um, are going to, the way it's going to grow down the road is, is what, the, what the project organization is about. Docker's always been embedded in the open source community, and the open source community is incredibly important for us. Um, but the boundaries between community, product, project were always were difficult for people sometimes. People, people would tell us that they didn't want to work on our product, they wanted to work on our projects, but the two were not always that distinct. So um, I think that, that's, that's the kind of, that's the where this kind of thinking's come from. And um, as someone mentioned, there are lots of details and the details are confusing. Um, but the, the, the vision is, I think, um, much 
less confusing. Um, it's not going to be simple to do. There's a load of work in breaking out components. Components that are really, that really, really work standalone are actually, and are really adopted by other people um, uh, are kind of are hard to build. And you have, but we know how to do it. We know that the way to make a component that's standalone and uh, works really well is to involve a community of people, you people, in those product, in those projects people who are really, really, really dedicated and fascinated and interested by one narrow area, whether it's um, infrastructure provisioning or whether it's um, Linux systems or whether it's um, distributed systems or whether it's um, the details of the um, Linux namespaces. You know, all those things have these niches where people get together and be very geeky about one specific thing that they really, really care about, and that's you people who are here today. And um, so, each one of each one of the projects that we're talking about today is is a component that we want to make a successful standalone project, a growing project, a project that people love, and a project that people absolutely contribute to, and a project that people use in ways that we haven't yet thought about. People. You know, I've, people have stopped me and asked me questions in the corridor or all over the place at DockerCon saying, uh, you know, can I use this for this? Can I do this? What about this? Have you thought about this? And it's like, yeah, these are really good ideas. Some of them are bonkers ideas, but they're, they, we're going to try them out. And some of them are going to be amazing. And the, these are things that are coming from you. And, that, that, and those things are going to lead us in, in new, new directions and let us build new stuff. Um, so. That's what we're here. You know, that's what we're here for today, and that's what's really important. And that's why you're all here, and we're really happy that you are here. Um, that's kind of really what I had to say about Moby. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything. I was going to talk about Linux Kit as well, if we want, but we we can always do that later. We've got all day. <laughs> yeah. What would you rather do? Should we do Q and A on Moby now? Talk about Linux Kit? Something else? You just shout out suggestions. You're awake now, no excuse. <laughs> I think I sent them to sleep. <laughs> I heard Livix over there. Infrakit's moving. We just didn't, we actually, we, Sorry, the question is, is confused about things that are in the Docker organization and things that are in Moby. Um, we had a few issues with GitHub. Um, I, have a, I have a picture of the bit where Tibor had his button pressed on the bit to move Docker Docker to <laughs> Moby. And we were like, we knew various things would break. Um, GitHub got back to us today and said, yeah, sorry, we, various things broke, yeah, sorry. Um, we, and uh, we'll try, we'll, we'll, we fixed the ones that broke now, but yes, if you move the other things, they'll break too. So we did stop moving things temporarily. So not everything is in the place it will be in. Infricate is very much part of that, um, part of that set of project components, and it, if Infricate is definitely moving out of the Docker org, um, but um, yeah, we, Still have some button pressing to do, or it'll maybe move into its own org. Yeah, the, the well, the, just to separate the the technicality of where in GitHub uh, from um, the overall how things are organized and who's in charge of what. Let's say the the goal was to create one big upstream for all of Docker, and then and that's Moby, and so we want all of the open source development to happen there, uh, and we want it to be more open than Docker. Like Justin explains, we've had this tension for a while of, on the one hand, we want to build a really great product for a lot of people with Docker, and that requires taking uh, product design decisions that, as we discovered, are sometimes incompatible with the open, consensus-driven, open source process. And we've struggled with that for a while because we don't want to give up on open source. It's a huge part of what we do. And we also don't want to give up on the freedom to build the products that we want to build. Uh, and so m splitting 
the downstream Docker product from the upstream Mobi project is our answer to that problem. And then further upstream, we have the individual components, which are projects of their own, which can be integrated, which are integrated through Mobi, but can be also used separately without Mobi. So in the end, you have three layers, all the way upstream, the components, downstream from that, Mobi, and downstream from that, Docker. And since Docker itself has a community edition, CE, which is itself upstream from a Docker EE, that's a total of four layers. Components to Mobi to Docker CE to Docker EE. Uh, and the GitHub org, like Justin explained, it's, it's more of, a, of an operational problem. To be honest, the, the individual components, I would love for us to donate uh, like we donated ContainerD. And uh, depending on where we donate, that might have, be an extra constraint. Right? For example, ContainerD for sure has to be its own standalone GitHub org because it's part of CNCF. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense for it to be in the Mobi org. So whenever you see components in the Mobi GitHub organization, think of it as a staging area. We're moving it to Mobi to show that we're serious about being open and in the development. Um, but I don't think long term Mobi aspires to be a, a home for individual projects. They should, they should eventually have their own home. So if we continue to talk about Mobi now, do we have any time to talk about Linux Kit? We've got all day. We've got a whole, se we got a whole session. Yeah, I heard a question we got about plenty of time. Yeah, I will, yeah. Yeah, so, so you're right that I, I've seen that confusion. So that's, that's definitely, I think that right there is the difficult part in the transition. And it's completely my fault. And it has to do with the moving of the repo. The problem is there was no perfect answer. On the one hand, right now, Docker is, like I said, it's a product used by lots of people. And it's a project developed collaboratively by also lots of people, but proportionally, but, but way less, right, in the, in the thousands. Um, and we want Mobi to, that, to be that place. And it's a place that many of the contributors have been asking for. Give us a real project, right, with no ties to one product, et cetera. So we're doing that, but um, that means bringing the project along, right? So it's a split, in a way. We're splitting the project from the product. Uh, so the project today is, it lives in lots of different repos, but definitely the most important repo is the engine repo today. Right? And so a Mobi project that's supposed to be the heart of our open source activities without the Docker, Docker repo does not make any sense because no would be, no, there would be no one there. Um, also, we're using the move to Mobi, like Justin explained, to kick off a real effort to componentize, to actually break down the monolith, or finish breaking down the monolith, because we started. Um, and so the idea was to say, with this move, with this flawless, you know, effortless move, as we pictured it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we were doing this during the keynote while Solomon's talking. And well, was, yeah. We were, it, it was like we, we prepared it before the keynote, but <laughs> you're making it sound like we improvised no, the last no, minute. No, 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 but it was Whereas just, we yeah. improvised the week before. <laughs> um, no, but, but seriously, the, the, the goal was to use the move as a signal to say, hey, now let's, let, let's start a, a sequence of changes. Uh, and in fact, the, the first idea we, board, we whiteboarded was to change the Docker repo pretty deeply, uh, actually split things out, uh, re rework it, add some tooling, so that it looks like the new Mobi project. And we actually decided against that and say, well, it's supposed to be open, so let's open PRs and let's wait for the announcements. We'll make the move because that's, again, tr supposed to be transparent. Uh, and then we'll discuss everything else in the open. And I think what happened was a little bit of the worst of both worlds logistically. The move was not flawless, so pe people just were wondering what was going on. And then because the, the, the changes to actually um, make it look more like, make it more, more like the Mobi we want. So, for example, removing the Docker CLI, uh, removing the, the Docker client, as, client libraries, um, 
removing the references to Docker everywhere, things like that. You adding the new Mobi tooling. Because it wasn't there, I think it made it more confusing. So anyway, to answer your question, what we actually want to do, what we will do, is not to replace Docker Run with Mobi Run. Docker remains Docker. It's exactly the same as before. If you install Docker from binary packages, that nothing changes. Um, in fact, the, the, the CLI repo will be in Docker slash CLI. Uh, Mobi has a tool, but it's a tool to build things like Docker. So Docker is built with Mobi. And we were just discussing before this started the unfortunate coincidence that Mobi happens to have a run command. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think we're going to rename these subcommands just to, to clarify even further. But yeah, they're completely different audiences. You use, you use Mobi if you're the kind of person who builds things like Docker. And then you use Docker to, you know, to build applications, et cetera. So now we just have to take everything I just said and somehow communicate it clearly to everyone outside this room. <laughs> and, we'll be, and things will be great. <laughs> Uh, should I repeat? So the question is, what other projects will stay in, in Docker? Uh, if it's a project, it will probably move out of Docker. We want Docker to be the open source product called Docker and nothing else. So um, we, we actually opened and we, we had an email thread going on for, I think, two months with, uh, with the maintainers. And, and the topic was project versus product. And we had this discussion of, hey, how should we deal with the separation? And, and a lot of the suggestions from the, from the maintainers, some of which are in this room, informed this, this, this change. Um, and, and one of the suggestions, well, actually, the, what, the consensus was roughly that um, the front ends, the UI, anything that um, me as a, as a user of Docker I interact with directly, or my application, like choice of interfaces, that is much more opinionated than everything else. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And a uh, hundred smart people could disagree all day long on how to do it. Uh, they could all, all have a different idea, and they could all be right. And that's a strong sign that it should be part of the Docker product. Docker has an opinion on what the command line should be and what the SDK should be. Um, and it's informed by our particular audience of users. But um, the same is not true for at least less true for the back end. There's only so many correct ways to run containers. So if you look at container D, sure, you could have, you could have the interface be something else. But at some point, um, is it really worth bike shedding for, for centuries over what exactly the flag is? Not really. Um, and, and container D is very unopinionated on those things. You know, yeah. you, it just the, the basic things like you have to put in the full path to the registry, which was one of the things yeah. that a lot of people complained about, about you know, Docker Hub is the default. Container D has no defaults for those kinds of things. But that's a product opinion that we we think it makes people's experience easier when they're using Docker if Docker Hub is the default. You can disagree because that's right. in your system, you never use Docker Hub or whatever. But, yeah. but we, you know, people people love Docker because it's easy for them. And we, we think those are the decisions we need to make to do that as product yeah. people. Um, but they, they're, they're nothing to do with the underlying reality of the yep. mechanics of pulling a container. Basically, what we discovered is to make things easier for the end user, you have to, you have to be less open in how you, you design the, the, that part. And it's just, you know, it's not a popular thing to say, but it's true. <laughs> so I think, you know, the, roughly speaking, everything that's on the back end will, in, that's in the Docker project today, will, will end up, is, is in Mobi, and will end up in its standalone project as we figure out how to spin it out. So the builder, for sure, right? Uh, the image distribution, things like that, layer storage. And anything that's the front end and the client side uh, makes more sense as part of Docker. And then, of course, in Docker EE, there's add-ons, et cetera. And then the other part, I think, is everything has to do with the packaging and the building. Um, the, the, the Docker packages are built in a way that already pisses off uh, <laughs> others because there's different ways to package. So for example, the, 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 the tooling, the, the building of the binaries will be in Docker. The building of the dev package, the RPM, the Mac application, the Windows application, that stuff is in Docker. 
but it's from source that comes from Mobi. Yep. Uh, oh, um, no. We, we, one of the thi oh, sorry. The question is: Will yes. Moby, Moby, will Moby slash Moby, so the Moby repo, become a library that gets vendored into Docker? No. Right. Vendoring is a terrible way of making components. <laughs> so <laughs> it's. I, it, I mean, a lot of the componentization failure we have in Docker now is because we vendor things rather than having. We really do want things to be binaries running in containers because that's how you construct. That's how our users construct applications. That's what we, you know, we spend all our time helping people build applications like this, and then we just vendor a load of stuff all over the place. But just to make sure I understand the question, so you're talking about the, I think what Luke means is, the 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 code, the backend implementation that's today the, in the Docker engine, that is now in Moby slash Moby. Uh, Will that find itself into the Docker product as a library? Yes. So, oh, I th no. So, you, actually, there's two answers. There's today, and then there's the goal. Right. Today, the answer is yes. So, ideally, we want Moby to be uh, a receptacle, right? It's just it's tooling, and it's a place to integrate components um, as containers, not as libraries, and uh, and then produce. A final system. In our case, the system is Docker, and in that case, there's there's Moby is just the tooling and the place. But today, it's it's the tooling and the place and the the monolith implementation that's not yet spun out into projects that can be containerized and integrated in that way. So for now, yes, they are a set of Go libraries that um, that end up being. Uh, Packaged up as as a, as one more component, so I'm not explaining this very clearly. But um, the engine today is still a binary. It's a binary that that will go away. It'll be replaced by many containers. But for now, we assemble it with one more container, or at least we want to. So the question was, where are you going to find Docker CE, the open source product? So um, I think part of that is to be determined. Uh, we're starting with uh, the vital pieces that are, that are spinning out of um, the project. So the CLI needs a home, obviously. So that's going to be Docker slash CLI. I think it's going to Docker slash CLI will have the client libraries, the SDKs, for now. It would be nice for the SDKs to have their own home, so perhaps Docker slash SDK. Um, for the packaging and building part, honestly, I think, well, there's an answer today. And the answer is all over the place, because it's very edition specific. You know, we have this whole idea of Docker for X, and that's really the direction we're going in. So there, from a product perspective, there's not going to be a one true Docker. There's going to be only Docker for something. Docker for Mac, Docker for Debian, Docker for Windows, et cetera. And, um, and so right now, those are all over the place. Um, and they're in different repos. And they're, in fact, not organized the same way. So we have our own. And some of them are uh, not open source. They never have been, because they're mostly building and packaging, et cetera. So I, I think we're going to have to figure that out. It would be nice, I think, for CE, for the, 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 the Docker CE versions that target open source platforms to have everything open source. Uh, that's the case today. And I think it should remain to be the case. It should, it should remain the case. And it would be nice for them to all be in one, either one repo with all the open source editions, or one repo per, per edition, one for Debian, one for Ubuntu, one for Red Hat, et cetera. So, uh, to be determined, uh, suggestions welcome. <laughs> so the question is, is it, will the can the Docker swarm command be split out of Docker and modularized? 
Do you mean the, the, um, the, the front end command specifically or just the, the, the whole swarm kit functionality? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yes, that's a perfect example of, of why we're doing this. A year ago, we rolled out Docker 112 and had orchestration built in. And a lot of users said, hooray. And a lot of people in the ecosystem said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so there's been discussions about that ever since. So SwarmKit itself, the, the orchestration component, is a separate um, project already. But the integration, but then it's integrated into the Docker engine, the monolith, in a fairly tightly coupled way. And that, 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 yes, that is something we want to solve. We've already started solving it with Container D. So Container D is actually gradually pulling out of the monolith the container runtime parts of the engine. And that over time, that kind of forces a clear interface with SwarmKit. And also, also um, Container D 1.0 does most of the things that people wanted standalone Docker to yeah. do. So if you've got a use case where you want Docker without the orchestration bit, Container D is almost certainly what you want. And it's really yeah. easy to integrate and use with other projects, and that's what it's for. Yeah. Um, and, if, and if it turns out that there is an, another component in Docker that you also want, not SwarmKit, that's when you can use Moby to, have a, to, to create a custom assembly with Container D and the other things, but not SwarmKit. Right? You can do that. Well, you will you be would. able to do that soon. So, for, yeah, for, for example, a Container D plus Lib Network would be a cool combo that we yeah. that we've done some work in um, in assembling as a, as a set of companies. we're working on 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 doing that so um, and putting those bits together, but it's still work in progress. I saw another question here earlier. Yeah. 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 So the question is, how we're going to deal with incoming issues? Um, I think um, better than now. Um, at the moment, incoming issues. You know, previously incoming issues would all go to Docker, Docker, regardless of whether they were um, actual open source contributors or people, uh, whether they were actually really about a particular project, sub project. Whether everything would go in a gigantic big hose onto Docker Docker, and it was really not working very well. <laughs> I, I feel like it's, so I'm pointing at Tibor and Victor right now. So these two guys are actually, they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting in the logistics and making this change work. So I, I, if now I feel like maybe we should have probably <laughs> also answered questions. But they're, the, the, um, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that first of all, we still have to figure some of this out. Um, second, we have in general a problem of too many GitHub issues coming in um, for many different reasons. I think one way to solve that is to make sure issues open on the repo are project-oriented or component-oriented issues rather than downstream product issues. The problem. The problem with making a product that is more and more mainstream, we're really trying to make Docker usable by more and more people, is that it's used by more and more people. And at some point, using GitHub as a point of entry to help people use the product does not make sense. It's going to make even, so I think it suddenly makes way less sense now. It's very visible that it doesn't make sense because people complain about Docker, in, in, and it's a repo called Moby. But actually, I think that just puts, it shines a light on a problem that was already there, which is that we should not be using GitHub as a community support forum. So we already have, we have the Docker forums, and, um, and I guess we have Twitter. <laughs> uh, for real emergencies. <laughs> but um, I think we should, on the product side, we, should, we, should, we really have to do some work to um, absorb more of that load. I personally would love to see, now, now I can say things like that without all the contributors freaking out because it's a product. I would love to see the Docker CLI having a built-in ask for help command where you know, if you sign up to your Docker ID, you can say, I have these bugs, and you just see your bugs there. Maybe attached to the context of your current project. I don't know. There's lots of cool things we could do. Yeah, um, I mean, we kind of experimented with some of those things with 
Docker for Mac and Windows because it's yeah. more integrated experience there. But and those have been incredibly helpful for debugging people's problems and solving people's problems on those platforms. And yep. and um, we really want to expand that to the other additions because it's actually incredibly valuable for actually being able to solve pro people's problems quickly because we have so much more information than you get just by someone yeah. trying to write down something in GitHub when they without any real details of you know trying to fix people's networking bugs when they say it's not working is really hard. <laughs> And, uh, but it's helping people's networking bugs when you've got a, a, yeah. a, a, a trace of the last packets that went out to DNS is really much easier. That's actually a perfect example of project versus product split. I mean, this kind of discussion would be immediately over. I mean, I would personally not want to open that GitHub issue discussing in the project, hey, let's give an option for users to log into our proprietary uh, account system and share information about their setup if they want to, right? I do not want to have that conversation in an open source project. Uh, but in a product, you know, as long as if I know users will love it. You know, so now it makes sense to give it here but not there. So hopefully it will re help reduce the load. And then one more aspect of the issues problem, I think, is that we're going to have to, s even without that end user uh, asking for help part, there's still the question of what is an issue that is specific to one component? What is an issue that is specific to a particular assembly of components in Mobi? And I think that's a, that's a, a, that's a, that file that goes in the category of um, finish building Mobi together. Uh, for, for those of you who are, who've been involved in open, open distros like Debian or Fedora, the early Fedora is a good example of that. I referred to it in the keynote. Uh, I think Red Hat did a really good job in the early days of the Red Hat Linux confusion, they had the exact same problem. They had a product that was also a project, and it was, you know, it was really active. It was very, I think, very similar in the Linux excitement days uh, to the container excitement days. And they, they made this split between Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And it's really similar to what we're doing here. And I think they did it very successfully. Um, and on the, on the Fedora side, on the project side, there's a lot of tooling, not just for packaging and, uh, and building an OS, but also for develop, developing and testing things together. And uh, still today, when we, got, when we get issues on the engine from Red Hat developers, they link to issues and uh, discussions on their system. Uh, and so, presumably because it gives them more information about the end-to-end -end environment. So I think that's where I think there's a really cool opportunity for Mobi to provide tooling like that for the container ecosystem to, to collaborate on. Let's say you, you, you're trying to reproduce a bug in container D, and you hit that bug in a really specific version of the kernel with a very specific setup. So you know, you're going to set an a, a issue to Crosby saying this is broken, but how is he going to reproduce it exactly? Right? It's, it's really hard. But if Mobi let you assemble exactly the, the test environment that you used, um, and, and the Containerd developers can easily reproduce that and develop and test in that, then I think that's a, there's a really cool opportunity there. But, so maybe that, is, that extends and to issues. And we're, yeah, we're doing a bunch of work specifically related to those problems with Linux Kit, so that you can exactly do that, reproduce on, kernel, on distro kernel X yeah. and those types of things, because we really need that internally for, for testing and so on. So there's a whole area there where maybe Mobi could be sort of a, a port of, point of entry, a triage area for, um, for system-wide issues. But honestly, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's some tooling design to do there. But uh, that, if some of you are interested in helping with, with that, I, that, would be, that would be fantastic. So. Oh, the, what was, so I heard Linux Kit, and what was the second thing? Yeah. So confusion between Linux Kit and Mobi, right? Uh, 
so, sorry, it's my fault that the. Oh, what the project. Oh, right, right. I see. Okay, I will repeat just to make sure that I understood the question. Uh, there is the Mobi project, and then there is the the command line tool called Mobi. How do we avoid confusion between the two? Correct. Um, well, I've, I have an opinion, but go on. You've you got an opinion. Go on. Right, I'll buy you time. <laughs> uh, I think the Mobi the Mobi command line tool should be um, the main interface to the project. So I think the, the command line tool, it, in a way, is the manifestation of the project, I guess. If you want to um, participate in the Mobi project, you install the Mobi tool, and then everything you need is, is in that tool. So I think, they, I think they should be very closely linked. Um, and because the, 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 the Mobi project is all about assembling systems out of containerized pieces, then the Mobi tool has a command to assemble containerized pieces into a system, et cetera. So ideally, the, the functionalities of the, the Mobi tool should, should fit map directly to the, the, um, the activities of the project. But by, by a system, though, we mean what you need to run the set of components yeah. on your platform. So it, the, the system it assembles may be a deb, or it may be a tarball, or any of the other things that people need if you want to run it. If you're building your your if your if your platform is Debian, then it will you build a Deb and install it. If your platform is bare metal, then you'll use the Linux kit tooling to actually assemble the whole bit with the kernel as well. But the the, the idea of the tooling is that it's a general purpose assembly, not uh, not just specifically for the whole low level systems parts, which is kind of the way we've been using it so far. But um, yeah. but. Uh, um, as Solomon was saying, we build Docker for a very large number of platforms. We build Docker for Debian. We build Docker for RHEL. We build, and each of these has a different view of what what the system is. Docker for AWS has a different view of what the system is. So there's a whole lot of specialization for the, all these different platforms that we that we already do, but in a somewhat ununified way at the moment. And the aim is is that you can build your container assembly set of things, you know, Docker CE, for example, for any of, any of these platforms. What is the name of the project? Sorry. Yocto. Oh, Yocto. So, um, sorry. The question is, how similar is this to kind of something like the Yocto project? I think the the um, <laughs> the big the real kind of difference is that we our our platform and design and thinking and architecture come from um, containers. We're, we've been immersed in containers for a very long time, and that's the way we think about things. Um, if you look at the, I mean, things like Yocto were kind of a traditional embedded systems projects, which are designed around kind of, um, well, embedded systems projects generally are designed around really horrible tooling. Um, I used to do embedded systems engineering on it. I've struggled with this for a long time. Um, um, simple containerized components and that the microservice type architecture and that the, the kind of architectures that and distributed architectures as well that we're building are different architecturally. I mean, it was, um, all the systems we're building are multi-host systems, for example. So um, tools like InfraKit are absolutely and totally baked into the, the thought process. Systems like Swarm multi-container systems, uh, you know, um, distributed systems are baked into all the things we do. So um, it, they, that's the kind of difference with the kind of old sort of single host tools that are really designed around building a device rather than a system. And that's, I think that's the, that's the really the biggest yeah. difference. Also, all the, uh, all the demos we've shown of Mobi um, end up building a system that includes Linux. We really want to be able to build something that does not include a, a Linux kernel. Uh, for example, 
if you want a deb that runs on top of an existing Linux. So did you, did you already say that? No. Uh, but, well, we kind of mentioned it before, but yeah. 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 The, that part's yeah. important because, to be completely honest, in the early days of this internal project, the, um, the, Mobi, the Mobi part and the Linux kit part were pretty tightly coupled. You could even say they were exactly the same thing. <laughs> and we, at some point, we decided to split them specifically so that you could use Mobi without being tied to Linux kit. That way, although it's, I think, technically not possible yet, but pull requests welcome, um, you should be able to, to build uh, any combination of these components uh, into a Debian package or an RPM on top of an existing Linux system. That way, we can do the equivalent of how we build the Docker engine today. I saw another question. Yep. So the question is, um, how can I get more involved in, in using Mobi and hacking in Mobi? Where can I go to learn more? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here is an excellent start. Um, there are resources out there. I think there, there should be more. The fact that we're half transitioned from the Docker repository, I think, is making it a little harder. Because there's a readme, but it's still in the pull request because we didn't want to force a change on the engine contributors until we have a discussion. So for now, there is, there's a website. There's uh, mobiproject.org. There, there is, um, although it is in a separate branch, there is a complete readme, and there are examples. Um, for now, I agree with Justin that it still helps a lot to be here in person with the people who built it, uh, and honestly, this, consider this a, a call for help because of the, the, because of the unfinished nature of the online resources. If after uh, working on it together here in person, you're still excited and you want to keep going, uh, it would really help if, if you participated in the effort to better explain it online to everyone else. Um, yeah. <laughs> but here you've got the people who built it, so you're, you're in the right place. Yeah. So the question for the person asking the previous question was, are you looking at L Mobi in general or Linux kits in particular? And the answer was, I started with Linux kits, but to, to use Linux kit currently, the recommended way is Mobi. So I ended up in Mobi. So both. Yes? So that's two questions. The first question is, now that uh, you're breaking up the monolith into more discrete components, are you considering other languages than Go for these components? And the other question is, um, gRPC or G HTTP API for the gRPC public versus code. HTTP API. So, so for the first thing, I think that um, for Linux Kit system specific stuff, we are committed to um, OCaml and Rust in particular, because they're, for those types of components, those are, um, well, OCaml, we spent a lot of time on the Mirage project. We have lots of, lots of great libraries and lots of people like Mindy who are um, <laughs> who's spending her time um, fuzz testing DHCP and other fun projects. Um, and um, Rust has a really growing systems community. I've had quite a lot of people having mentioned Rust in my talk coming up to me and saying that they really want to help contribute and that they really want to work on this stuff. And um, that's really great. For 
most of the other Docker projects, um, Go has been very good for us, I think. And yeah. um, uh, it's, I think there's a, there's a niche for Rust in some of the low-level stuff. There's bits of um, Run C that could that would fit with Rust much because they're written in C because you for threading reasons and things like that. But um, so they're bits and pieces. But I think you know Go. We, Go's served us very well, and yeah. it's a, has really good support, and yeah, we, would, we like it. I would say there's no, there's no master plan to uh, change languages in particular. There is, but it's true that having this modular architecture makes things really future-proof. Right? Things, a, a component could change languages uh, in the future, and it wouldn't affect the the, the integrity of the whole, which is really nice. I mean, it's what we're selling to everyone else, right? Use microservices in your application. Now you can use any it. language you like. Yeah, <laughs> we're doing it for the platform. Uh, I think, yeah, Justin's right that we're the, the, in the bottom of the stack, you're going to see more uh, Rust, no camel. Um, and that, it's cool that the architecture supports that. Uh, for the second question, gRPC versus HTTP, obviously the engine has an HTTP REST API. Uh, and some of the newer low-level components have adopted gRPC. All of them, actually. Hmm? All of them, I think. Maybe, yes. It might, it might be true some of them say. being actually all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you know that that is, I think, in the pull request where we propose a plan, we we talk about uh, type of interfaces. Or if we don't, then here we are. We've, we're, we're talking about it now. Um, I, my my proposal is to adopt gRPC as the standard interface for the low-level components. The cool thing is if we choose one, and gRPC is, you know, it, a lot of people use it, and, and all of our existing components already use it. If we can make the assumption that it's all gRPC, then I think Mobi can do a lot of more cool things, like generate SDKs, um, that which would be a nice start. and. Um, it, it just, I think it allows for, for more, t more, more automated tooling, so less manual work for system builders. Um, and th the question there is, how do we transition from a monolithic REST API to um, a componentized a set of gRPC interfaces? And we have a, a general plan to propose. I don't know if well, this is the right. Well, we have, I mean, what, what, what we actually have is experience of doing this for Container Day. And, yeah. um, and it's been incredibly helpful because ContainerD is a, a set of components for, the, um, for a whole yeah. set of different purposes. You know, the Im image side of things, building root file systems, running containers, and, and it has a set of gRPC APIs that cover these things um, and the, the relations between them. And we have, and because it's been designed from scratch. Thinking, thinking about these particular problems, we've got this incredible experience from doing that that's really important. And Steve-O can talk about that later, probably, because um, he like, uh, but, but I think um, we've, we've, got the, we've got a model from doing, doing this thing in ContainerD because it, when it grew up to be no longer a, just, just for running containers, it also had a, a, a whole bunch of other things. Um, and, um, um, also has Prometheus interfaces, which are really cool as well, for different functionality as well. Which is, a, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think what we what we've learned from from putting that together is really important for the rest of the project. Yeah, I, I per personally, there's no doubt in my mind we should use gRPC. The, the The big question is how do we move from monolithic engine API to a collection of gRPC interfaces without breaking everybody in the process, without breaking backwards compatibility. So we have to decide which parts are variables and which parts are constants in this process. Um, and I think that's probably a breakout discussion for those of you who want to roll up their sleeves and participate in, the, in this transition. Honestly, we're looking for help. My 30-second pitch is that I, th I think we should not make the REST API a constant. Uh, I think instead we should make the, um, the Docker client libraries at a facade and uh, maintain compatibility at that layer while we break up the REST API gradually into low-level gRPC interfaces. And um, along the way, 
the, the, as we gradually remove pieces from the REST API and deprecate it piece by piece, we have to guarantee that you can do the same things with the, with the, with the combination of the new gRPC interfaces. And the enforcer of that will be the official Docker client libraries. I think once we're done with the transition and we have a fully open and modular set of interfaces with a nice tooling to generate SDKs, et cetera, Docker will switch to uh, using that tooling. So the Docker SDK will be a special case of um, a Mobi generated SDK for a specific configuration. And at that point, we can switch to a, um, a situation where the Docker client is just one Mobi client among many others. And then we can remove the special status of the Docker SDK as that facade. But for the transition, I think it'll be very useful. And it will, it, will, um, it will avoid having a situation where the, the, the current REST API is a sacred cow and we can't touch anything, and we, but we keep adding things to it, which is really, I think, one of the reasons for our problem, our monolithic problem. You know, no one wants to break the engine API, but some of the things we need to do require, at some point, you got to break it apart. So that's, that's my proposal. I, I, we're going to do a breakout session to discuss that in more detail if you're interested. But it's, it's, it's a proposal. They're, that's exactly why we didn't merge anything. We wanted to discuss it first. So. Yeah, what, what was the uh, inspiration for the name of the Mobi project? Is it a goal that you're pursuing? And like, where might that go in the future? The name specifically? Yeah. Uh, I, the, the name is a reference to the whale. Oh, <laughs> no, I think that, um, honestly, we took inspiration from, from Fedora because, like I said, that Red Hat had to deal with a very similar um, situation. And uh, when we were trying to work out how to do this, I personally went and spoke to a bunch of people who were involved in the Fedora project, and they were very helpful in walking me through what worked, what didn't. Uh, and obviously, there's a connection between Mobi and Docker. But Mobi is not Docker. Uh, so to have a name that has a, a reference but is not the same thing. If you look at the logo, it's the tail of the whale, right? It's, that's really all there is to it. Plus, it's a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> it's short and catchy. Yeah. That's um, oh. The question is, will you also use gRPC between container D and the shim? And it, that it, sounds like a. It does. It's already there. It, do, it does already, yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I could not have answered that one. I have a simple question. So if I want to start doing something tomorrow, where do I go? Is it Linux, uh, GitHub, Linux, Git, Linux, Git? Where is it? What is the good starting point? If, if you want to play with Linux Git, yeah. then yeah. That, that, that repo is there. Uh, I think it requires you to install the Mobi tool because well, it's, it's currently still got the version in there because we haven't merged the other people oh, yet. Oh, I see. Oh, hence so the earlier question. Okay. It's, so it's in slightly in a state of transition as well. If you want to play with Linux Kit, you can go to the Linux Kit slash Linux Kit repo and, and it's all the there and it should all work. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, well, we'll answered all the questions. Yeah, no yeah. one's got any more questions. <laughs> yeah. I, so there's going to be there's going to be a breakout session on Mobi specifically, and then you saw the agenda. There will be breakout sessions on the individual components. Uh, I just want to repeat one more time that the we we this was a trade-off. Uh, we picked openness and opening early to involve everybody uh, at the expense of completeness and uh, a smooth experience, and so. Um, fingers crossed, this will pay off in the form of some of you sh participating. So we're, we're, you know, all help and participation is is very very welcome and and appreciated. So, yeah, thanks a lot. Ready? We're gonna talk about Linux Kit, or I don't know. We've 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 gone a bit off agenda now. Yeah, um, we're off agenda. So, we're, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Continuity. Yeah, let's talk about it. I can right. talk about it in this later. All right, talk to you all later. All right, yeah, so uh, I wanted to give a quick update on Container D. We kind of had our last summit in February, so kind of the progress that we've made since then. 
uh, like Patrick already mentioned, like we were, we joined the CNCF, we got a new logo, which is pretty nice. And I, I think back in February, we talked a lot about snapshotters, things like that. And we've made a lot of progress on the development side. So I figured I'd do a couple demos, but it's kind of hard for me to see because I have to mirror my display because it's Linux. So like today, we can start container D and then um, oops. Yeah. So after we get container D running, we can go into another terminal and basically before anything the CLI is not supported. So what we're supporting is the gRPC API. But we use the CLI for debugging and development and moving forward. So I believe I have this up right. So yeah, so CTR is our CLI. And you can give it a container ID. And we finished uh, snapshotters, pulling in image distribution, unpacking layered file systems, and execution. So this is resolving. Um, images on the Docker Hub using this naming schema. And all of these naming schemas and the way authentication works with registries is all swappable and interchangeable on the client side. So um, going forward, you're, you're not going to have um, complex authentication blobs that you're pushing into Containerd for pulling images. A lot of that will be handled client side. So, like, we can just go ahead and run this. And I didn't do the pool since we're on conference Wi-Fi, but that's totally, like, taking, taking image, unpacking it, having all the read-write file systems and overlays, and just executing that in Containerd. And it's pretty quick. And we have the other things, like you can run different commands or just get a shell in there, replacing instead of generating the OCI spec from, from the image config. So like, I didn't want to take too long since back in February, I think the best part of the summit was all the breakout sessions. And we, had a, we have a few data points for that. So if, if you added any data points to for today on container D, then like just meet us in the breakout sessions later. But this is just like my quick status update on container D, kind of where we are today. And we're still targeting end of, end of Q2 as our feature complete time. And we're, we're really close. So we're starting to work on the polish now. And we do have Windows support. So you run the same command on Windows and you get uh, fetching Windows images and running them as well. So, yeah. so yeah, I guess Patrick's back up or, or no? Yeah. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's I should try that sometime.